In this video, we are going to learn about a method for solving quadratic equations. Now, a quadratic equation is an equation where the highest power on the variable is 2. In other words, after you've tidied everything up and you've simplified, you are still left with an x squared or a variable squared in your equation. Up until now, we have been working with linear equations. And linear equations are equations where the highest power is 1. So you have x only to the power of 1, or just x in your equation. Okay, and the, the fact that we use to help us solve a quadratic equation is the fact that if you have two factors, and they have a product of 0, in other words, if you multiply two numbers, and your answer is 0, then it follows that either one of those factors could be zero. Because in order to have a product of zero, one of your numbers must be zero. So, for example, if you have a times b equals to zero, or just a b equals zero, it follows then that in order to make this statement true, the left-hand side to be equal to the right-hand side, your a must be zero, or your b must be zero. They don't both have to be zero at the same time. So it's not an and situation, it's an or situation. If the a is zero, zero times b will be zero, your equation will be true. If b is equal to zero, then a times zero will be zero, and your equation will be true. So we use this to help us um, um, to solve a quadratic equation. But I just want to draw your attention to the fact that this is only true if the product is 0. So if you, for example, have a times b equals to 12, then we can't say for sure that a must be 0 or b must be 0. In fact, there is a range of numbers that could make this true. It could be 1 times 12. It could be 2 times 6. It could be 3 times 4. So it is not possible for us to conclude a specific value for either a or b that would make this equation true. So it must have a product of zero, otherwise we are unable to solve. Okay, so the method that we're going to use to solve quadratic equations is, number one, make sure that the equation is in standard form. And I mentioned that previously on the, on the previous slide. We must have it equal to zero on one side of the equation. If it's not equal to zero on one side, we can't use this product rule to help us to solve the, the equation. We also need to make sure that we have two numbers multiplied together. And in order to find out what we multiply together to give us an expression, we need to factorize. So step one, equate to zero. Step two, make sure you factorize. And then once you've factorized, you know that each factor could be equal to zero, and you can use that to solve. So let's just look at an example where we apply that. So we want to solve for the variable here. Number one, step one, is to make sure that the equation is in standard form. So we are first going to get the 6x on, and the 8 onto the right, left-hand side by subtracting them from both sides of the equation. Once you've subtracted everything from the right-hand side, you are just left with zero. Okay, now the next step is to factorize that equation, to factorize that expression. Okay, so 9x squared minus 6x minus 8 is a trinomial, so it will factorize into the product of two binomials. And if we just test and we have a look at some factors, we will see that 3x and 3x will give us 9x, and the factors of 8 that will work in this case are negative 4 and positive 2. If we just double check that, the first 3x times 3x is 9x squared. The outers, 3x times positive 2 is positive 6x. Negative 4 times positive 3 is negative 12x. Positive 6x subtract 12x is negative 6x and negative 4 times positive 2 is negative 8. So that's each of our factors. Now that we've got a product, we've got 3x minus 4 times by 3x plus 2 equals to 0, we can conclude that either this factor must be equal to 0, because 0 times the 3x plus 2 will give us 0, or we can conclude that the second factor is equal to 0. So if we now solve for x, this is now just a linear equation because my x is to the power of 1. So we solve it by isolating the x on one side. So we get x to be 4 over 3. And over here, 
we first subtract 2 from both sides and then we divide by 3. So in other words, if x is 4 over 3, it will make the equation true. And if x is 2 over 3, it will make the equation true. So a quadratic equation can have a maximum of two solutions. Sometimes it has no solutions, sometimes it only has one, but it will always have a maximum of two solutions because the power on your variable is x squared. So that means that that will tell you how many solutions are possible. In your homework book, there is an example for you to try, so please pause the video and try this example. Right, step one is to get this into standard form. So we, it's not equated to zero at the moment, so we're going to need to multiply out. 4x times x is 4x squared. 4x times negative 3 is negative 12x. I'm going to add the 9 to both sides, and that will give me zero on the right-hand side. We now need to factorize this. This is actually a perfect square trinomial. So it will factorize into a perfect square binomial. The square root of 4x squared is 2x. The square root of 9 is 3. It needs to be negative in the middle in order to give us negative 12x. So that means that we've only got one factor here. Okay, It's a single, it's a repeated factor. So therefore, if 2x minus 3 is equal to 0, we will have a situation where our left-hand sides equal our right-hand sides. So we add 3 to both sides and then divide by 2. So this equation only has one possible solution.